his desperation echoed down the hall. Just another bird in the house, dying to get out. Just another bird in the house, dying to get out. I want to join my own kind, that's all. Just another bird in the house Dying to get Just another bird in the house Dying to get out Just another bird in the house Dying to get out ooh, 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 ooh. We've got Eileen Edmonds in the house today and our guest artist and welcome to Unity of Bonaire on a beautiful morning. Woo! You can hear me slipping into my high voice there. Beautiful. And, and I hope you're all excited about the festival that we're going to be participating in later today. But uh, right now we're going to get our service started by affirming what we know to be true. God is good and all is well. Here we go. Go ahead and stand. Wonderful morning beyond compare. I feel God's loving presence everywhere. I am filled with joy. to unity of Bon Air, where we live and express unconditional love and grow together in peace and prosperity. 
My name is Kelly Lane, and I'm a service leader here, and a prayer chaplain, and a director for Reader's Theater, Cheryl Fair, is still writing the scripts. Whether this is your first time or your hundredth time joining us together, either in person or online, we are grateful for your presence and participation as we share this special time together. We come together as part of love's divine purpose that calls each of us forth to celebrate the connection we all share through the holy presence within and all around us that we call God. In this spirit of community, we enfold in light and love all spiritual and religious gatherings and all people everywhere. We especially welcome any of you who are here for the first time. If you are here in the room, please raise your hands and keep them up so one of the ushers can bring you a welcome packet. And we invite you to join us today for fellowship coffee following the service and the Halloween celebrations following that. If you are with us online, be sure to visit our website at unitybonair.org to find all the wonderful activities here at Unity of Bon Air. And before we go any further, let's take a moment to acknowledge all the wonderful people who make this service possible this morning, from those who greet you at the door and doors to the sanctuary and to the volunteers in the bookstore and the fellowship coffee and of course our tech and music teams, let us say together, we love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we behold the Christ in you, and we see you doing amazing things. And now, let us welcome our leader from our youth and family ministry. Good morning, everyone. Of course, we're hoping to have a lot of fun. We're seeing it's going to be a lot of fun today. We have sack races, and we have eyeball relays, and we have face painting and tattoos, all kinds of fun. And we're going to have a cakewalk. That was a big hit last year, so I'm expecting it to be a big one this year. So if I can have all my young friends come up front, we're going to go get ready to have a party. So this is the most beautiful witch you've ever want to see. And look at our bumblebee. Oh, is that a bumblebee? Oh, it's Batgirl. Awesome. stand as you are able and as we enjoy our congregational song together. All right. Today we're going to affirm that something wonderful is happening right here and right now. One, two, here we go. Something wonderful is happening to me right here, right now. Something wonderful, something wonderful is happening. 
about some opportunities happening this week and soon to come here at Unity of Bon Air. Boo and Stew is here. Please come join us for fun, fellowship, trick or treating, great stew and more. We'll be on the promenade with all the festivities starting at 1 p.m. Starting today and throughout the month of November, we are collecting food donations for Chesterfield County Food Bank. Drop off your donations in the collection bins in the hallway and don't, well, remember, I like to say remember, not don't forget, no glass jars, please. Our Women of Unity are collecting items for Home Again, an organization supporting the homeless in the Richmond area. Please see the donation list you received with your bulletin and bring your donations next Sunday, November 6th. Have you heard we're creating an updated digital directory? Please sure to catch up with Becky for your photo. She'll be taking pictures each Sunday until November 13th. I'm guessing in the hall, but ask her. No, where? Outside in front. Okay. I'm looking for it. I'm going to get my picture taken. <laughs> You're looking for it. You're going to get your picture taken. <laughs> On Wednesday, we'll have chair yoga at 11 a.m. with Barbie. Then midweek meditation at noon, followed by our weekly potluck luncheon in the fellowship hall, a fun Wednesday midday. On Wednesday evening, our prayer chaplains will meet at 7 p.m. in the fellowship hall. And keep in mind our garden days. This week, they're on Wednesday and Saturday, starting at 2 p.m. Thank you, garden volunteers, for keeping our grounds so beautiful. I just so enjoyed the garden. You can keep up with all these opportunities and more at Unity of Bon Air by visiting our website, subscribe to the weekly e-news, and follow us on Facebook or Instagram. The daily word for today is protection. The affirmation for today is God is here, I am safe. When I say the words in the daily word, 
When I say I, you say I to yourself. Once in a while, I enjoy doing things that frighten me. <laughs> Sharing ghost stories around a campfire. Watching a spooky movie. Even savoring the uneasy feeling before thundering down the first hill of a roller coaster. <laughs> I do love that. <laughs> All of these things can feel scary. Even though I know I'm in no real danger. If I begin to feel unsafe in any situation, I remember that right here where I am, God is. Breathing out, I release tension. My body relaxes. Fearful thoughts begin to dissolve. Breathing in, I think more clearly, slowly, I regained renewed strength and peace of mind. My confidence returns as I remember that nothing in the world can prevail against the strength, the wisdom, and the love of God. The scripture for today, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Psalm 23, 4. And now I'd like to welcome Reverend Patty. Pardon? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. So the affirmation, I'll say it once and then say it with me twice. And the second time you say it, Say it with authority. As the Fillmores, the founders of this denomination said, when you say it with authority, you magnetize the cosmos. God is here. I am safe. Together. God is here. I am safe. And again with authority. God is here. And I am safe. And now Reverend Patty. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. When, we, when the platform person thanks everybody, they don't get to thank themselves. So we appreciate yeah, them doing that thanks. for us. <clears throat> so for our funny today, somebody pointed this out to me. I hadn't caught it. The, on this little pamphlet that got left for people to take home, Grateful Reflections, there's a, a, a prayer in here, and it's got this wonderful typo. So we're... <laughs> So we're going to look at that today. The first one is good. I give thanks to God for the divine purpose and timing that together weave a golden thread of opportunity throughout my life. There is an answer to every prayer. With this awareness, I accept and give thanks for the abundant goof that is mine. <laughs> to claim and to share with others. <laughs> so I hope folks are using their thankful journals and finding how that really does reset our minds. Um, so before I go into our prayer, I want to mention that our one of our dear trustees, Tom Lehman, had a significant birthday yesterday, and we wish him a happy, happy birthday. Where is he? And so let's, let's get centered. We've had all this beautiful music to call us to ourselves. Take a couple nice deep breaths. Let our shoulders drop. Allow our consciousness to remember that we are one with the one. There is no separation. The truth is there is love and each one of us is an expression of this divine love. 
So we bring into our sacred space today our beautiful world, our wonderful planet. We will be enjoying the outside this afternoon. We bring into this sacred space all the leaders around the world. May their hearts be focused on how they can bring good to those over whom they um, govern. We bring all our beautiful children, a planet full of limited, limitless possibility growing up. We don't know what they will become, but we know they will become amazing expressions of divinity. And we bring into this space all those who are in our prayer box and those in our congregation who are um, moving into complete healing and wholeness. Linda Matika, Frank, Tom, uh, Brennan's husband, Sam, our sound tech, Corey, and Mark, who is back here with us. We see the light of Christ filling every cell in their bodies. If you have anyone in your life who you would especially like to remember, you can name that person out loud or silently right now. And we see all these beloved ones held in the light of love, knowing that only good comes to them. That God's desire for each one of us is to become the truest and deepest expression of the Christ that we can bear in our world. We bless our children as they are off in their uh, classrooms. We bless our teachers. We bless all those who are still outside setting up, and we are so grateful. We close with our usual prayer saying, I am grateful three times. Please join with me. I am grateful. I am grateful. I am grateful. So um, <clears throat> Kelly went over a few of these. We have just, November is going to be an opportunity to just share, share, share. Yeah. He mentioned the food, food collection out in the lobby. The women are doing something specific for the homeless. Aranda will be here next week sharing about Christmas Mother. And we have uh, Christmas lights and decorating going on if you'd like to donate to that. And every Sunday is an opportunity to bring something yummy to share. And um, this, we're going to have a very low-key fellowship time today because we're going to have so much outside. But um, lots of opportunities to give and share. So now one of, one of my favorite things to do is to welcome new members into our congregation. So I'm going to call Barbie to come up with me. Do you want me to invite the others up or you want to tell about them first? Good morning. Good morning. My name is Barbie Nunley, serving today as the new member coordinator. And it is my great pleasure to introduce five new members today. Okay, so we have Charlie Hatch. Please come on up. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about Charlie. Charlie first became aware of Unity in Syracuse, New York, around the year 1995. In 1997, he moved to Albany, New York, and joined Unity Church of Albany, and was an active member until around the year 2008. It was there that he met and married Jill McGrath. They joined a Unitarian Universalist church in 2008 because it, was, it shared unity values and it was close to their house. In 2020, during the early months of the pandemic, they moved to Richmond, North Chesterfield area to be closer to, to Jill's two children and their grandkids. 
They're very happy to find unity of Bon Air, especially since it's only 10 minutes from their house. <laughs> Charlie and Jill have been attending UBA services regularly since the COVID restrictions have been reduced. And Charlie is active in Men of Unity and Midweek Meditation. Charlie is looking forward to becoming a member of the Unity of Bon Air family. Okay, and we have Jill McGrath, Charlie's better half. <laughs> Jill spent most of her life in upstate New York, having grown up in the mid-Hudson Valley area. Jill's first career was teaching Spanish in Poughkeepsie, New York, after having her master's degree. She moved further upstate to Schoharie County, New York. And she told me that in October, they call it so scary. <laughs> she raised her two children there. And Jill then went on to receive a master's of library science degree and taught library and research skills for 20 years until she and Charlie retired. They have tented across the US several times and have enjoyed volunteering at quite a few folk music concerts. Jill is really happy that they have found Unity of Bonaire and is excited to be joining. And next we have Andrew Horn. Andrew grew up on a dairy farm in rural South Carolina. He attended a county Methodist church just a half mile walk from their farm. He came to Richmond in 2010 to work on a project, fell in love with the city, and never left. Andrew came to New York, New Thought via Unity of Roanoke Valley, one of the first, if not the first, Unity churches in Virginia. He was drawn to the group early on as they just were forming, often meeting in a Holiday Inn conference room. He left a career in advertising and publishing in 2010. He then formed Personal Dynamics Institute, a personal and professional development organization. Andrew continues to serve as managing director for Personal Dynamics Institute, as well as its spin-off company, Compass Coaching Solutions. Andrew is ordained in the International Metaphysical Church, which is a New Thought organization. He is looking forward to participating in Unity of Fine Air activities, especially with Howard Green and the men's group. So, we have that in writing now. Our, our next new member is Gloria Johnson. <clears throat> Gloria has been a member of Unity of Spiritual Center in Baskerville, California since 2008. During that time, she served as secretary and treasurer of the board, chairperson of the facility rental committee, hostess at the 8 a.m. first service, first Sunday service. She has participated in the Women of Unity group and numerous classes, such as Fall Book Club, Keys to the Kingdom Prosperity class, and other activities. Gloria has, was married to Unity member Ray Johnson for 33 years until he passed away. And she has two children. Dr. Shonda Ray Evans, who resides in Powhatan, Virginia, and Cameron Moses Johnson from Hampton, Virginia. She was a special education teacher at Vallejo City Unified School District for 25 years. And Gloria owned Classic Four, which was a fine glass art business in Susun, California for four years and is currently part owner of Pelham Transportation 
in Reedsville, North Carolina. Gloria came to Virginia because of her children. She believes family is everything. She is currently taking care of her six-month-old granddaughter, Raya, during the day. She said she is living her best life with two exclamation points. <laughs> And last but not least, we have Carol Barnhill. <clears throat> Carol was born in Texas and has lived in Virginia for 40 years. She has a degree in biology. Carol worked in Alexandria for the Department of Commerce and Patent and Trademark, both federal agencies. Her job was to keep all the employees safe and healthy. And while she was in Alexandria, she attended Unity Church. She moved to Richmond to be with her daughter and family. And Carol is a grandmother and great-grandmother. Carol loves Unity of Bonaire and is so happy her friend Terry brought her to her first service. So. And so now we're going to stand, and um, if that's available, and we're going to sing, I Behold the Christ You Are. I behold the Christ in you, hear the life of God I see. Many new members get their goodie bags handed to them by a pirate. <laughs> so um, the music team is so glad to welcome back. We haven't seen this lady since before the pandemic. This is Eileen Edmonds, and yes, good morning. You've already good heard morning. it. <laughs> A wonderful singer, songwriter, and recording artist. 
And, and that voice, ooh, ooh, la la, beautiful voice. But she's going to be sharing some of her original songs today. And um, do you want to? Tell us a little about this or just go right into it. Oh, well, um, so as a writer, um, I was coached to uh, stick with what I know. <laughs> and I, I know I can love. And that's the title of this song. And uh, this song was written over 30 years ago. And just within the last six months, the true ending uh, came through. So I hope you'll join me in the true ending. You'll know it when you hear it. <laughs> So please join us.
Well, good morning. First, I'd like to thank Patty for this opportunity um, for me to kind of step outside my comfort zone. It's kind of the result of uh, Patty's misfortune. Uh, so, hope you all bear with me here. First off, I've got to say, it's my wife's birthday today. <laughs> Happy birthday, dear Emma. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> so I couldn't get away without doing that, you know. So today's talk, um, if anybody looked online, it's the title of it is the locus of focus is no hocus pocus. <laughs> Sounds like a mouthful. But this actually is a title that came to me some years ago, actually when, <clears throat> I think it was Susan Greenmont was playing here. And uh, I guess at the time, one of her songs kind of sparked something uh, that kind of gave that, um, that title to me. So, I, it kind of held with me for a long time, and I never really had an opportunity to do anything with it, other than to just kind of sit with it. But more recently, uh, a similar expression came um, in the sign of one of those highway signs you see as you're driving back through D.C. And uh, I, I think what it said on that one was, not quite your locus of focus, no hocus pocus, but it did say, keep your focus, or no, it's no hocus pocus, keep your focus. <laughs> so, you know, obviously to keep off the text and, and all of that kind of stuff. And then more, more, most recently, I, I also saw online where um, I think Disney is now doing something that says hocus pocus. I'm not quite sure what their, their take on that is. I didn't really see that much more of it. So, <clears throat> but anyway, that's, that's kind of a little bit of the history of where the title of this comes from. So, so now let's kind of explore this semantically. Locus, um, as defined, is a place where something is situated or occurs. Focus means a center of interest or activity. Secondly, a state or quality of having or creating clear vision. Focus focus is defined as to perpetuate or create a hoax or trick or befuddle. So here we are in the season of trick or treat. So to extrapolate a little further, the place where you find yourself and the center of your concentration, it's not a hoax that's put upon you. But it is by nature what you, through your thinking or visual influences around you, have either created or you've allowed it to be created, consciously or unconsciously. It is what you have allowed to enter into your consciousness and hijack your awareness and your attention. We are today in this world subject to tremendous digital influences every day. These bombardments of information, images, opinions, activities, create an environment which can throw us into conflict, not only with ourselves, but with others. And here we're trying to remain a loving, kind, compassionate being. So how do we navigate this? The hocus-pocus can be a trick we allow ourselves to get caught in. 
You know, we can get sucked in very easily. The news, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, politics, world climate, the local shootings, gossip, any of these things can trick us into losing our center, our peace. So the question is, how do we take back control and really become the keeper of our conscious activities and the unconscious manipulations surrounding and working to throw us off center? One possible guide or relief which can be used and some of the free is some of the free online courses and services available, such as Inside Timer, Calm, or simply YouTube with some guided meditations. Most of these have a free version and can be a great guide for setting the tone or regaining the tone for one day and helping to connect or reconnect to emerge as a more conscious, loving being. Yoga Nidra is another practice, The Daily Word, Science of Mind magazine, many of the, the publications the, uh, that Unity puts out are also possibilities for use in your daily activities. So begin with what you're comfortable with, and many of you probably already do this. Take three minutes. Just let your locus of focus belong to you and not a reaction or a product of outer manipulation. Claim and manifest your peace and see if your day doesn't go smoother. Secondly, we can disassociate from the influences which are there to distract, disturb, and throw us out of our awareness that we are a kind, loving, compassionate being. Simply change what you allow into your world. The second thing is, another place where we can take back our power is creating a space before we go to bed. We can plant seeds which we can follow into sleep, which will give us inspiration, insight, and possible problem solving. I know for me, some of the poetry that has come to me has been the result of a seed thought <clears throat> that I had going to bed, and then it kind of ruminates in my mind and percolates, and then I start to have a dialogue. And, and sometimes that internal conversation then surfaces in in the form of poetry, or us just getting up and writing down some thoughts and things like that. I read somewhere that like digital lights in your, in your sleeping area there can really interrupt your sleep and, and throw you off balance and kind of influence how you're able to get into the dream state and really into a deep uh, place there. Another suggestion that my wife uses is that uh, she takes a book, usually not a digital book, but a, a physical book, and then reads some uh, inspiring thoughts or something like that prior to going to bed. Just to not have that electrical stimulation, that electronic stimulation, which we're all, you know, all around all the day. Third thing that you can do, and actually this could be the second, or the, the other could be the third, is what do we do when we're thrown off balance? You know, one of the things we can do is we can kind of pause. And, and I think I, I heard it here some time ago. I think somebody suggested, um, I think it was called SIP, which was sit in prayer or sit in presence, whatever. Um, but to just maybe, and you can use your phone for this, just set your timer for three minutes and then just sit there and just let it all sit. Then come back. If you have to make a decision, if you have to do something, then you can move on through that. 
But that hopefully will help you realign with your purpose and what you're doing. I've heard it said that um, intention is nothing without action, but action is nothing without intention. The Buddha in the 10 verses in the Dhammapada says, we are what we think, having become what we thought. Like the wheel that follows the cart pulling ox, sorrow follows the evil thought, and joy follows a pure thought. Like a shadow faithfully tailing a man. We are what we think, having become what we thought. So, look at how you start your day. Do you, do you immediately pick up your phone? See if you got messages. Go to Facebook. <laughs> check your emails. Or do you set the intention for the day with a devotional reading or meditation? I may be preaching to the choir, but if you're like me, I've let myself become distracted in the mornings with some of these conventions. Check my email, check messages, all that kind of stuff. But it's also been written, as I know better, I do better. So I'm trying to catch myself. So focusing is not a process of talking to yourself. Awareness really needs to precede focus. For if you aren't aware of where you are, how can you engage in the activity of focus? In the book, Mastery of Self, Don Miguel Ruiz says, awareness is a conscious communion with yourself and the environment which surrounds you. Now he says, you are not your thoughts. Your thoughts are simply the narrator. The simple act of beginning your day with gratitude, giving thanks that you are alive, healthy, and continually surrounded by blessings. Shifting your attention from being at the mercy of the external stimuli and relying on internal, internal communion can set the tone for your day and your life. Ernest Holmes, in his book, The Thing Called You, gives a suggestion. The law of life can work for you only as it works through your thought pattern. Since it is possible to control your thoughts, it's possible to control your destiny. And he says, say, I am a free soul. I am completely completely, positively, and eternally free. I am free from doubt, fear, or unhappiness, today and forever. We are, by our nature, creatures of habit. It's said to develop a habit, you're supposed to do it for 20 days, some say 30 days. So my question is, are you able to take control of your locus of focus? I hope perhaps some, of, some value can be gained from this discourse today. So if you'll take some time when you awake to be mindful and keep your peace if you're thrown off, sit. And thirdly, prepare yourself for sleep. Dream and achieve. Thank you.
nice sound. <laughs> Thank you, Jim Lake, and that was just so beautiful and practical. Thank you. So it's now time for us to prepare for our meditation. We'd like to share a song called Kinder. We have Amy Corsetti on the stage helping us. I've decided to be happy. I've decided to be glad. I've decided to be grateful for all I ever had. I decided to let go of all this pain tonight. I decided to let go of all these demons inside. body relax and we're going to take a little journey imagine yourself walking slowly down a path you're walking towards a clearing you're alone but you're embraced by the presence of love you come now to the edge of that clearing and see that it is a circular with an open path towards the center. You now sit down at the edge of the circle and those trappings of your life, whether you're mother, father, son, daughter, worker, leader, the roles that we take on and identify with. We now release these and other things which might scare us. We need, we now leave these at the edge of the clearing, putting on a white robe with a golden tie to your waist. You move forwards to the center where you stand facing the sun. With hands raised, you are bathed in the light of the sun source, feeling the blessing washing away all of your thoughts and the list of what you feel you need to do or what you feel you need to be. You can feel the weight of all the responsibilities lifted. You feel renewed, vibe, enlivened. Take this in. Sit in silence. Now, 
now feeling filled up. You move towards the entrance where you can once again put on the trappings of this outer life. Renewed as you move with a lighter step back on the path. You now move back into this room and feeling your hands and toes. Maybe you wiggle your toes, stretch your hands. And when you're ready, just slowly open your eyes, ready to face whatever comes your way. The source is always there to fill you. For you are a continued expression of life and love. So it is. Thank you, Jim, for blessing us with those good words. So now it's time for us to have our ushers come forward. And if you have your offering, uh, physical offering in your hand, we'll hold it in our hands and bless it. If not, we'll hold it in our consciousness and bless it with our blessing. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, for the joy of giving and receiving. We turn it back over to our music, our beautiful music team today.
Is it real? It's okay to believe, to let go. Love is the light that will catch us. Thank you. I'm blessing from the side because me and those steps still aren't talking to each other. <clears throat> so let's bless our tithes and gifts. How we give thanks for the law of circulation that everything we share comes back to us that what we give goes out and blesses others, that this is just this eternal circle. So we send these ties and gifts to be a blessing in the lives of those who are looking to find hope, solace, comfort, the divine within. So we send them on our way, and we close with our three sentences of being grateful. We are grateful, we are grateful, we are grateful. So it is. And I'd like to invite our chaplains to stand up. Who's in here? There we go. Invite you to grab one of these wonderful souls to have a prayer with you as the uh, service concludes, and they will bless you indeed. Um, let's see. I'm inviting everyone to go into the fellowship hall for a very brief of coffee and a limited amount of snacks because there's oodles of food out in the... Um, on the promenade. So please stand with me and let us close with our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Yeah.